Hi there. Today's lesson is going to be talking about how to solve two-step equations. So, so far we've been looking at really how to solve one-step equations, where you might have something along the lines of 3x equals, let's just say, 12, and there was one step in order to isolate the variable. We would divide that by 3, divide that by 3, so that x equals 12 divided by 3 is 4. What we're talking about today is a two-step process where now we might have something more like 3x, uh, let's go with plus 1, equals 13. In this case here, there's a couple steps we're going to have to do in order to isolate the variable. I can't just start off by, by dividing the whole, both sides by x. It doesn't quite work out that way. I'm going to do an extra step here, so maybe subtract 1, subtract 1 to get that to go away, leaving me with 3x equals 13 minus 1 is 12 and then divide both sides by 3 to get back to where I was for x equal to 4. This is a two-step equation, and we're going to do this for in several different kind of forms with some addition ones, subtraction ones, and eventually use some multiplication and division as well to start dividing things up. So that's the idea there. We have some samples here, examples. We have 7v minus 3 equals 25. So it says to solve it and check your solution. So in this case, we would take the initial equation here and we're going to move the whole number to the other side over there, right? So we'll move that constant over there by adding 3 to both sides. That gets the 7v to stay by itself. So it comes down to our equation, and 7v becomes equal to this sum, 28. At that point, we divide both sides by the coefficient, 7, in order to get the v by itself, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. The way you would check that then is you would take that 4 and plug it back into your equation to see does it actually balance out. So 7 times 4 is indeed 28. When you subtract 3, 28 minus 3 is 25. And because we end up with a balanced equation, we know that it is correct. Now I realize when you do your homework today, most likely you probably aren't going to be checking all your work. That's pretty common for kids. They, they always skip the check the work part. But as always, Make sure you know how to do it because if you do take an assessment or a test, which you will for just our summer work, but also when you come back to school in the fall, you want to make sure you're getting things correct. Sometimes when we're adding and uh, using our um, two-step equations, we just have to make sure we are doing things properly as well in terms of working with integers. So in this example here, you can see they're going to subtract 8 from both sides. Well, now I'm subtracting two negative, I have two negative numbers. So when the signs are the same, I find the sum. 10 and 8 is 18, and I keep the sign the same. So make sure you follow those same rules about working with integers like we talked about before, and then work on a solution. So here we're dividing negative divided by positive for a negative answer. So just lots of little steps, little places where you might make an error along the way, so be careful about that. Let's do some samples here together. So on this first one here, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. Zoom in a little bit because it's getting really tiny. I don't have a lot of space to work with here. So on your case, you might want to use a different piece of paper to do your homework. Homework has a little more space on it, I can see, than this, but that's okay. So we end up with 4y equals 13 minus 1, which is 12. We would divide both sides by 4, divide by 4. y then equals 12 divided by 4, 3. Okay. So that's one example there. Here, we want to get the, the k by itself. That's our goal, to isolate that variable. So we would subtract 7 from both sides. In this case here, the signs are the same. So we find the sum, and we keep the sign the same. So negative 10 equals 5k. I want to get now the k by itself. So I'll divide negative, five, negative 10 by 5. Dividing that, negative 10 divided by 5 is 2, but negative divided by a positive is a negative, so negative 2 becomes the value of k. All right, so simple enough there. Let's look at one with a fraction down here, number 9. Again, I will subtract 11 from both sides. That goes away. In this case, my signs are different, so I need to find the difference. The difference between 11 and 4 is going to be 7. Which one has the greater absolute value? The negative 11, so we make that negative 7. So now I have 7 ninths n equals negative 7. The goal here is to get n by itself, so I multiply by the reciprocal 9 sevenths, 9 sevenths, which means this cancels, cancels, cancels. I'm left with n on this side equal to, oh, look at this. It reduces to a 1 and a 1, 
negative one times nine is negative nine, so I have n equals negative nine. And again, one you probably could do, but a couple places you might make a mistake is just working with adding and subtracting the, the integers there. You could also not flip that properly and get nine sevenths, could be a mistake there. And you could easily forget about this negative one right there, causing a little problem, okay? So different ways of doing that, okay? When I look at number 11, another odd one here, very similar, right? We're gonna add 15 to both sides. We're gonna then, then multiply by the reciprocal and then simplify. When I look at number, let's look at 15 real quick here. We can see a simple adding 18, adding 18. I have 48 equals 12z. Divide both sides by 12, divide both sides by 12. And 48 divided by 12 is 4 equals z. So some of them are very straightforward. Some might take a little more work when you're working with fractions and things like that. But that's going to be what today's lesson's about. Okay, so again, use these as some samples, some examples for you. And then you're going to use that to then work on the homework for tonight, which are going to be the odd questions here for solving two-step equations. Okay, see you back here in just a minute. All right, let's work on the homework and see how this works. When I look through your homework here, I actually don't see anything with a fraction like we just did on our practice, which is just fine. All right, so this is pretty easy than it looks like. We're gonna subtract one, subtract one, goes away. Two X equals nine minus one is eight. So we divide both sides by two, divide by two. So that X equals eight divided by two is four. All right, this one, I'm gonna rewrite it over here so I have some space. So 3w plus 5 equals 23. And we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. So 3w equals 23 minus 5 is 18. We'll divide both sides by 3. So that w equals 6. Number 5, we're going to add 2, add 2. So that 4t equals 14 plus 2, which is 16. Divide by 4, divide by 4, so that t reduce, reduce, equals 16 divided by four, which is four. Number seven, let's add one, add one. We have 64 over here, equals eight X. I'm gonna divide by eight, divide by eight, so that eight divided by eight is one. X is gonna be equal to 64 divided by eight is eight. Number three, We'll subtract three, subtract three, so that's six V equals 42. Divide by six, divide by six. Now V by itself, because reduce, reduce, is equal to 42 divided by six, which is seven. This is a funny one, just because it has a zero, you might think, oh, it's good. No, we still need to get the, the P by itself. So we're gonna subtract 14 from both sides, so that two P equals negative 14. Look at how that worked out. Uh oh, be careful, make sure you get the negative sign. Divide by two, divide by two, so that P equals 14 divided by two is seven, but a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Number 13, I'm gonna subtract five, subtract five. So I have three W equals, ah, huh, the signs are different. I find the difference and keep the greater absolute value negative three. Divide by three, divide by three. So now I'm left on this side, w equals three divided by three is one. Negative divided by positive is a negative. 15, we're gonna add one, add one. So 5d on this side. Here I have signs are different. Find the difference and keep the greater absolute value, which is negative. Now we'll divide by five so that we have d equals 10 divided by five is two, and negative divided by positive is a negative. For our next one, adding 24 on both sides. So we have 11x equals 24 and a two. Signs are different, find the difference, which is 22, and keep the greater absolute value, which is positive. Now we'll divide both sides by 11, so that I'm left with x equals 22 divided by 11, which is two. Number 19, we're gonna add 49, add 49. So I have 3G equal to 49 minus seven. Signs are different, find the difference is 42. Keep the greater absolute value. We'll divide both sides by three. So that G becomes equal to, in this case here, you know, that maybe not one you know off the top of your head. Three goes into four one time. We have one there, three goes into 12 four times. So G equals 14. 
Number 21, we're going to add 1, add 1. So I have negative 9d equals 18. Divide by negative 9, divide by negative 9. So that d equals 18 divided by 9 is 2. Positive divided by negative is a negative. And finally, number 23, we're going to subtract 25, subtract 25. Oh, sorry, subtract 24. I'm not sure why I did that there. And so that that is reduced to nothing. And we have negative 5b equals signs are the same. We find the sum and keep the sign the same, negative 25. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, reduces down to b. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and the signs are the same, so we're going to make that a positive solution. So b equals just plain old 5. All right, that is it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.